Hello there, my name's Jeff Wilde from Roden Schwartz. Um, I thank you for, uh, for watching. I'm just going to give you an overview of the new Roden Schwartz RTO series of oscilloscopes. The particular model we have here is a 10 giga sample, four channel, two gigahertz band up instrument with active probes clicked on the front. And we've got it connected up to a board that at the moment is generating some very infrequent errors, eight of them per second at the moment. So I'm going to quickly show you uh, how we can set the scope up to um, acquire this data, try and find the intermittent error, and actually then um, have a look what might be causing the error, perhaps from a DC power, su power supply line, etc. The scope itself is laid out like a traditional oscilloscope with uh, vertical, horizontal position and time-based control knobs. We have a couple of new functions on the scope, um, which I'll go into in, in, in detail, and a, a touch display with all the generally used icons, which you'd use on a normal day-to-day -day basis at the top of the screen, followed by touch icons at the bottom of the screen where you want to select your trigger, or you maybe want to sail five away, file away to the uh, USB interface, that sort of thing. So the first thing we'll do is we'll assume that we don't know anything about the signal here. We'll do a, an instant preset, and we'll go and press auto set to actually grab the signal on the oscilloscope um, and the signals come up on the screen there so quite easily we can change the time base per division and the actual size of the waveform and we can see straight away that on this particular signal if you wind the brightness up there's the odd flicker the reason we can see this flicker is the very fast update rate of these scopes these scopes can sample data and display up to a million times per second which is unprecedented particularly if you're looking for rare faults, glitches, transients on a signal. So what we'll do now is we'll, we'll go and set this scope up to actually show what the performance of the update rate is. It's currently 590 odd thousand times a second and very occasionally we can actually see that, that glitch. We'll change the display to dots mode. Let's just zoom in and now we can achieve the full 1 million updates per second. And we can see that even with eight errors per second, occasionally we can see that odd flicker. So if we change the display to infinite persistence, we can now get a visualization of these errors as and when they occur. I'll just increase the intensity up there. So we can see that the very fast update rate of the scope is allowing us to see that there are very infrequent transients on the signal there. We can see that there's a transient there of about one division. And as we're on a division time base of 50 nanoseconds per division, we can get a rough idea of the size of that. So I'll just go back to um, a trigger now. So now we've got an idea of what our fault is, we can set a trigger up. So I'll choose my source as channel one. And I'll say I want to have a look at a width of the trigger. And you notice the scope actually pops up a, a display on the screen and you can change the intensity of the display so you can still see the waveform actually behind what you're setting up. So in this case, I'll look for a, a transient which is smaller than, say, 50 nanoseconds. And um, in my case here, if I just go and set the, the vectors, So having uh, set the scope up to trigger now on this particular event, and just to re refresh that, we're triggering on the width of a pulse which is shorter than 30 nanoseconds. I can clearly see behind the screen here that the, uh, the pulse is there. Let's turn that off. We can actually see our pulse on the display. Um, we may wish to actually have a look by changing the time base if that pulse is on its own or if there's a sequence of them. So what we can do there with the scope is we can touch the zoom icon on the top onto the waveform here and then by changing the size of the box on the display we can zoom in onto the actual pulse itself and bring it into the center of the display as I've done there. Now the real power of the scope comes in the ability to uh, have multiple displays of the same waveform or, or uh, rearrange the display in which way you decide fits the problem. I think this particular signal transient is to do with the DC, DC spike on the actual power supply, so I'll turn on channel 2, which is the, the, the DC voltage, 
um, which is the, the green waveform on the display there. And I'll bring that voltage down onto the bottom of the display. I can arrange the display vertically or horizontally, whichever way fits. Um, in this case, it's probably best underneath now because we can see that the transient on the DC supply line is actually pretty much coincident with the actual glitch that we're getting on our data signal there. Once we've got that, of course, we can stop the display. We can go into the, uh, the hard copy and we can either print the file to a printer. This is a Windows XP operating system. Or we can save the data to, um, to a flash disk, bring it into our reports and edit it for future reference. That's pretty much all I want to say at the moment, and I hope you found that overview useful.